India's indigenously built survey vessel, INS Sandhayak, concluded its maiden port call at Port Klang, Malaysia, from July 16 to 19, aiming to boost hydrographic cooperation with the Royal Malaysian Navy. The visit focused on technical exchanges, subject matter expert discussions, cross deck visits, and sporting events to enhance maritime collaboration. It also reflected India's broader Mahasagar vision for regional maritime security and capacity building. Commissioned in February 2024, INS Sandhayak is India's first of the new Sandhayak class survey ships, equipped for coastal and deep water surveys, oceanographic missions, SER, and humanitarian operations. The port call highlighted India's growing leadership under the Indian Naval Hydrographic Department and the National Hydrographic Office in promoting regional cooperation and hydrographic expertise across Southeast Asia. India has cleared its 30-kilowatt laser-based anti-drone weapon system, Sahastra Shakti, for production after DRDO announced the successful completion of all field trials in April 2025 at Kurnool. Developed by DRDO's Chess Lab, with industry collaboration, the system, an upgraded version of the Integrated Drone Detection and Interdiction System MK2A, neutralized fixed-wing UAVs and drone swarms, up to 5 kilometers away using directed energy. This marks a major leap from the 2-kilowatt version, previously deployed by the Indian Army, during Republic Day events, and for counter-drone operations near the LOC. With this breakthrough, India joins a select group of nations, advancing high-power laser weapons. DRDO now plans to transfer the technology to private firms and is pursuing even more powerful directed energy weapons, including future systems, ranging from 50 to 100 kilowatt, and a strategic laser project, reportedly named Surya. India's DRDO is set to begin trials of a land-based, truck-mounted version of the Vertical Launch Short-Range Surface-to-Air Missile, or VLSR-SAM, by late 2025 or early 2026. Adapted from the naval version, successfully tested since 2022, the system is built on the Astra MK-1 air-to-air -air missile and aims to protect Indian Army formations and Air Force assets against aerial threats up to 50 kilometers. Mounted on high-mobility 8x8 vehicles, it will integrate with IF's Integrated Air Command and Control System and Army's Akishtir networks, bridging gaps between very short and medium-range defense. The system, developed in partnership with BDL and BL, includes mobile launchers, command units, and reloading support. The upcoming tests will validate its mobility, radar integration, and interception capability, reinforcing India's push for self-reliance in layered air defense systems. India's Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, HAL, is evaluating a proposal to convert its HJT-36 Yashas intermediate jet trainer into a light attack aircraft aimed at export markets. The plan targets nations seeking affordable solutions for counterinsurgency and border security, where high-end fighters are not essential. Originally developed to replace the IF's aging Kiran fleet, the Yashas features five hardpoints, capable of carrying a 1,000 kg payload. However, its compact nose limits radar-based weapon integration, restricting beyond visual range engagement. HAL remains focused on completing trials and securing certification for the trainer variant, following recent successes, install and spin recovery tests. Analysts note that global interest in the armed version will depend on the IF's adoption and production reliability. The move aligns with India's strategy to promote indigenous defense exports in a competitive global market. China has officially commenced construction of a massive hydropower project on the lower reaches of the Brahmaputra River, called Yarlung Zongbua in Tibet, near the Indian border, in Arunachal Pradesh. Premier Li Chang announced the launch during a groundbreaking ceremony held at the Mainling Hydropower Station site 
in Nyinki City on Saturday, estimated at 167.8 billion US dollars. The project includes five cascade dams and is projected to generate over 300 billion kilowatt hour of electricity annually. While intended to power external markets and local demand in Tibet, the project has triggered concerns in India and Bangladesh, both downstream countries. Officials from China's key planning and power construction agencies, alongside local attendees, participated in the event. The development marks a significant step in China's infrastructure ambitions, but also heightens geopolitical sensitivities over transboundary river usage. India is set to strengthen its ground forces with the induction of the indigenously manufactured AK-203 assault rifle, now named Shur. Launched last week and based on Russia's Kalashnikov series, the rifle is tailored for the Indian Army's needs, offering high reliability, improved ergonomics, and the ability to fire 700 rounds per minute with an effective range of 800 meters. The rifles will be produced by Indo-Russian Rifles Private Limited, IRRPL, in Umethi, targeting an annual output of 1.5 lakh units, with plans to double capacity. Major General S.K. Sharma, CMD of IRRPL, confirmed that several countries with diplomatic ties to both India and Russia have expressed interest in acquiring the rifle, reflecting its growing international appeal due to its battlefield adaptability and modern features. The Lakshadweep administration has initiated the process to acquire Baitra Island for national defense purposes due to its strategic location and logistical challenges linked to civilian habitation. A government notification issued on July 11 proposed transferring the island's entire land area to central defense and strategic agencies. Authorities invoked provisions of the 2013 Land Acquisition Act, mandating a social impact assessment, which will include consultations with stakeholders such as Grama Savas. District Collector Shivam Chandra confirmed the Social Impact Assessment Survey would be completed within two months. The move signals a shift toward prioritizing national security in India's remote island territories, though it also raises questions about displacement and administrative transition. Final acquisition will depend on findings from the Social Impact Assessment and coordination with relevant stakeholders and defense agencies. India's Akash Prime missile system has emerged as a transformative symbol of indigenous defense success, achieving both cost-effectiveness and combat performance. Originally initiated in 1994 under the leadership of Dr. Prahlada Ramarao and inspired by Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, the Akash project was developed with a modest Rs 500 crore budget, nearly 10 times cheaper than comparable global systems. After 15 years of development, the Akash family evolved into Akash Prime, tailored for high-altitude operations, above 4,500 meters. In May 2025, the system proved itself during Operation Sindor by neutralizing over 50 Pakistani drones, including Turkish and Chinese origin systems. Subsequent high-altitude trials in Ladakh in July 2025 validated its effectiveness at over 15,000 feet, reinforcing its strategic value along the China border. Akash Prime features an indigenous active RF seeker, 360 degrees target engagement, and an 88% single-shot kill rate. The system integrates into regiments along the line of actual control, boosting air defense in sensitive zones. With 82% indigenous content and ongoing exports to Armenia and interest from Brazil, Vietnam and Egypt, Akash Prime exemplifies India's growing defense autonomy and global competitiveness. Future variants like Akash NG promise extended reach and advanced propulsion. <laughs> India is set to strengthen its maritime defense with the induction of the SOV-400, an indigenous mini-submarine developed by Larsen and Tubro, LNT Defense. 
Recently certified by an international expert firm, the 400-ton submarine is designed for coastal defense, intelligence gathering, surveillance, and special operations. Its compact structure and ability to operate in shallow waters make it highly suited for missions involving marine commandos like the Marcos. The Indian Navy had first envisioned the inclusion of mini-submarines in 2009, and the SOV-400 is expected to fulfill that long-pending requirement while aligning with the country's push for defense self-reliance under the Atmanurbar Bharat Initiative. Its stealth capabilities and multi-role functionality position it as a significant threat to underwater adversaries. Beyond domestic needs, LNT aims to market the SOV-400 internationally. As India targets $5 billion in defense exports by 2025, this mini-submarine, alongside other unmanned underwater vehicles such as Adamia, Anag, and Maya, could serve as a cost-effective solution for regions like Southeast Asia and the Middle East. The project not only marks a technological milestone, but also enhances India's stature as a dependable global defense manufacturer. India has announced a $7 billion approximate rupees 61,000 crore agreement with French aerospace company Safran to co-develop a 120 kN thrust engine for the Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft Program. The deal aims to establish a robust indigenous engine ecosystem and includes provisions for 100% technology transfer and intellectual property rights, covering not only the AMCA, but also future helicopter platforms like the Light Utility Helicopter, Light Combat Helicopter, and the upcoming Indian Multirole Helicopter, IMRH. While the collaboration is seen as crucial due to Safran's expertise, especially with the Rafale's M88 engine, the Indian defense community remains divided. Many experts have expressed concern, citing delays in past projects such as the Shakti engine, where technology transfer was postponed by nearly two decades. This previous experience raised questions about Safran's reliability in fulfilling its TOT commitments and led to prolonged dependence on imported parts, increasing both cost and logistical complexity. While some of the arguments highlights, Rolls-Royce's offer for superior technology, full IPR ownership and broader engine applications, making it ideal for India's AMCA program, unlike Safran's outdated approach and limited tech sharing. Some others, Point out UK's close relations with US may in future lead to complications with regards to delivery timeliness, TOT and IP rights. As the AMCA represents a critical leap in India's aerospace capabilities, any disruption or delay in technology sharing could significantly affect the efforts of DRDO's GTRE and how to develop a self-sustaining engine ecosystem. The outcome of this deal is now being closely watched amid rising expectations for defense self-reliance. That's all from YKS team for now. Hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.